Welcome to this episode of Inside Brush Country Sports, brought to you by South Texas Orthopedics. I'm your host, Chris Filateo, sports editor for the Pleasanton Express. Three weeks into the season and two Atascosa County teams are on a streak. The Eagles remain undefeated at 3-0, while Jurdenton has won its past two games. Pleasanton was tested early by Lanier last week, but the Eagles prevailed in a 42-14 home victory. The Eagles called the Wolves 35-14 in their last of a three-game road trip. The Trojans battled for the majority of the game, but lost to DeHanis 27-7. Six, a drop to one and two overall. The Aggies remain winless after a demanding 21 to 13 defeat by Cariso Springs. In this episode, we have a special interview with Ken's Five Sports Director Joe Reinagel. Then we will listen to players' interviews from last week's matchups. We will move on to our breakdown of each school and listen to what every coach has to say about this week's games. I'm here with fellow Texan and Ken's Five Sports Director. Joe Reinig, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank good, you. Good. Well, you know, you've been covering sports around the greater San Antonio area for a long time. What's your favorite part of covering high school football? Oh, man. Uh, you know, just the atmosphere, the excitement, the color of it all. Just, uh, uh, you know, that, that always excites me, hearing the band play and the cheerleaders go. But, but not so much that. And then you get to the meat and potatoes of, of the players because they play the game because they love it. And, you know, they, they work their tails off throughout the week, and then that payoff is Friday night. And so it's just, it's just a blast. Everything about high school football is great. Definitely. Now, how do you try to cover high school sports differently from college or pros? Well, it, you know, it's different because, uh, I guess, because what I mentioned. I mean, the, the players, you know, they're not getting paid. They're doing that because they love it. They're doing it because of the traditions of their high school uh, and just because they love the game. So, you know, the difference, say, between high school and pro, when, when a high school kid makes a mistake or, or does something that maybe he shouldn't do, you know, you kind of cut them a little more slack. They're kids. Pros are getting paid a lot of money, and they ought to know better, right? So in, in that respect, it's different. And then, you know, it's just a lot more fun for me to cover high school sports. I completely agree. I've never had the, the actual chance to cover pros or, or college for that matter, but high school You'll sports get there. is definitely You'll get where there. it is. Um, well, thank you so much for your time again. Uh, my pleasure. Right. My pleasure. Great. Let's hear what Pleasanton defender Chris Vasquez had to say after the Eagles' home win over Lanier last week. Here I have Chris Vasquez, the Pleasanton Eagle defense, 4-0. Oh. Yes, sir. How do you like it? Yeah, I love it. It's great, dude. <laughs> it's great. I see. We had a little struggle on the defense. Uh, did y'all uh, Yeah, well. Think- did y'all think they were going to be this light? Our coach was uh, preaching to us that they're going to be physical, but I know we started off slow, but we got into it and we just picked it up at the second half. So what are you going to take from this to move on to the next game that we play at Lytle? Uh, I mean, we got to come out uh, like stronger. So as in uh, you were saying that y'all, y'all finally kicked in in like yeah. the sec- third, late third, third quarter in your offense. How did they come uh, about? I mean, they just got to limit their penalties. Now we evaluate the 2-1 and one Lytle Pirates. Then Pleasanton head coach Tab Dumont tells me how he looks to continue the Eagles winning streak. Pleasanton hosts San Antonio Lanier at Eagles Stadium set for 7.30. Last year, the Eagles beat Lanier in San Antonio 42-7. Pleasanton is coming off its second win of the season, a 53-28 victory over San Antonio Jefferson, in which the Eagle defense shut off the Mustangs in the first half while the offense totaled 438 yards for the game. Lanier is coming off a 19-28 loss to San Antonio Harlandale last week and a 39-6 loss to Somerset the week before. Lanier compiled 206 passing yards and rushed for 188 more last week. Here at Pleasanton High School with head coach Tab Dumont. How are you doing today, coach? Doing good. Great. Well, let's talk about Lytle. What's their offensive formation? Uh, Lytle is uh, a two-back, multiple offense. Uh, they, they like to run the power game uh, in between the tackles. Uh, they've got a good, strong-arm quarterback, though. They like to throw a lot of play-action passes and run their receivers vertical down the field. How do they, how do they line up defensively? Uh, defensively, that's the million-dollar question this week. Uh, we've got three films on them. Uh, every, every film is a different defense. Uh, they primarily, I think, base out of the 50 defense with a uh, – a nose guard and two linebackers behind him with uh, two defensive linemen and two drop-ins. But we've seen him in a 3-3 stack. We've also seen him in an even front. So, uh, like I said, that's that's the big question around here this week. We Our, our linemen have really had a lot on their plate uh, that they're having to learn. 
because uh, they've got to block by rules this week. Well, the Pirates are averaging 36 points per game, Coach. How do you look to contain their offense this week? Uh, I tell you, the be- our best defense will be our offense. If we can hang on to the ball, uh, get some first downs, keep the keep the clock running, and so forth. And then plus, we just we got to keep playing the way we played last week defensively, run the ball well, and when we get there, we need to tackle. How will this game measure up to the previous three games? I, I think this is a-, a very big game for us. It's their homecoming, I've been told. Uh, they're two and one. They've got a good a good football team. Coach Gomez does a heck of a job coaching over there. Uh, you know they lost a game last week. I, I kind of feel like they feel like they should have won. So I know they've had a great week of preparation for us. Uh, you know we're three and zero. Oh, we're a marked team right now, and uh, it's going to be a tough challenge, and it's something that we're looking forward to. Great. Well, good luck on Friday, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. We interviewed Indian Alex Oweto after Jordanton pummeled Dilly on the road. Uh, we did real good today, and well, our offense came out real sluggish, our defense came out sluggish, but then we started firing on all cylinders, and that's what helped us win the game. Our defense shut them out in the second half. Okay, so what do you feel like the key was tonight's win? Uh, the line, it started up, started up in the front, on the churches. Our boys knew they had to do it, and they did it. And uh, how, how will this uh, win motivate your team going into the, win the next week's game? Oh, huge win, huge win. Dilly's a big rival, and we knew it was going to be tough. And we got Carrizo coming into our first home game and confidence carrying to the next game. I think we got it. Next, we look at Jurdenton's first home game of the season against Carrizo Springs. Afterward, we find out how Jurdenton head coach Wayne Johnson will prepare the team for Friday. Coming off a 35-14 victory at Dilly, the Indians host their first home game of the season against Carrizo Springs at 7.30 this Friday. In last week's win, the Indian defense shut out Dilly in the second half while totaling 345 yards of offense. Carrizo Springs is coming off a 21-13 win over Poteet last week to stay perfect on the season. Last year, the Indians beat the Wildcats 27-21. Here at Jurdenton High School with head coach Wayne Johnson. How are you doing today, coach? Good, Chris. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Well, let's talk a little bit about Carrizo Springs. How do they line up offensively? Um, they've got uh, mostly in the shotgun, and they, you know, they're spread out quite a bit. But they're trying to run the football. They they spread you out to try to get running lanes is what they do. And uh, you know, last week against Dilly, they were more, more of a 50-50. They ran in through the ball 50-50. Well, these guys are more like 80-20 running the ball so you know we're, we're gearing up to stop that running game is what we're doing this week now what's their defensive formation defensive formation is real similar to what dilly ran uh, it they uh, they have a, a five-man line basically and they move them around up there but that but the difference is that they like to bring a lot of linebackers so that's been a challenge this week trying to learn to pick that up okay now the wildcats are coming in at three and oh friday how crucial is this game leading up to next week's district opener well you know you always want to going to district on a positive note and I you know we we played three good ball games and I don't expect any less this week I think we'll play a good game again this week and uh, get after them they're you know they're big and they're a physical team similar to us so uh, I think it's going to be another good game how great does it feel knowing you'll be playing at home this Friday oh it's fun not to get on a bus <laughs> you know it's been uh, it's been a long deal uh, but that's just the way the schedule worked out and uh, we are happy to be at home Great. Well, good luck, Coach. Thank you very much. I spoke with Poteet's Rudy Rodriguez last week when the Aggies narrowly fell to Carrizo Springs. I'm here with Rudy Rodriguez, Poteet Aggies defensive lineman. What are your thoughts on the game? Uh, you know, uh, we fought hard and so did they, but um, we tried to fight our hardest and they came out on top. Well, definitely you fought your hardest. The game was tight at halftime. Crucial things happened in the third quarter. What went through your mind in that quarter? Just to keep trying, keep trying. You know, it was, it was, they were about to touch on, but I wasn't giving up on my teammates. And, and they weren't giving up on me, so I just kept fighting for them. Despite the result, how do you feel about the team's performance tonight? Well, you know, going going on to and getting shut out these last two games, you know, we, re- we really showed Carrizo. Carrizo thought that, that they were going to shut us out this game. But we showed them who we're about, and, you know, it's just it's a, a leap of faith that we could take for these next few games. And we stopped with Trojan linebacker Adrian Martinez after Charlotte lost to DeHanis. I'm here with Adrian Martinez, outside linebacker of the Charlotte Trojans. What are your thoughts on the game tonight? Hot, hard game. Fortunately, we came out on the losing side, but taking this is going to help us for next week's game against Bolte. We've had good practices, but to help us get those practices up. What does this loss mean after dropping to one and two? I mean, just, we got to work harder. We got to every practice we, we do. We got to go 100 miles an hour. You know, we make mistakes, but we're going to go 100 miles an hour with those mistakes. 
What was the one play that stands out the most tonight? That last pick just kind of killed us, I guess, but we need to keep our heads up and just have a good week of practice. This week, Poteet hosts county foe Charlotte for its homecoming game. Last year, the Aggies beat the Trojans 32-13. Poteet is looking to gain its first win of the season, coming off a 13-21 loss to Carrizo Springs last week. Charlotte is looking to get back in the win column after its loss to DeHanis last week, 6-27. Kickoff is set for 7-30. Here at Poteet High School with head coach Hank Willis. How are you doing today, coach? Great. Great. Well, you know, this is a, a pretty exciting time for this school and the city with homecoming coming up this week. Now, what will a win mean for the team Friday? Well, we're, we're you know, still trying to get that first win. Uh, we're very excited to get back on the field again. Uh, we're going to push hard and do what we do and try to come out on top this week. Now, you guys came in a lot sharper and even more focused against Carrizo Springs. How do we look to continue that focus going into Friday? Well, one thing that we've talked a lot about with the kids is we're not trying to peak too soon. We want to get a little bit better every week and prepare for district. You know, that's what to us that's what preseason is about. You know, we'd like to be we'd like to we'd like to get wins in preseason, but more more importantly we're trying to get everything in order so come that first district ball game we're ready to play and get after it because, you know, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a dog fight trying to get into the playoffs and we wanna be one of the teams that are getting in this year. Now, how much fun is it for you to, to see the kids play their friends essentially in a, in a game like this? Well, again, you know, our the, the way we do things here at Poteet, you know, we're not really concerned with what's going on across town or what's going on down the road. We're more concerned with what's going on here at Poteet, and we're going to keep correcting our mistakes and we're going to keep getting better, and we're, we're going to have some fun this Friday night. Great. Well, good luck on Friday, Coach. I'm here at Charlotte High School with Head Coach Jerry Dominguez. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm good. All right. Now, how important is Friday going into the fourth game of the season? Uh, I'm not going to put like too much emphasis on it because I mean, uh, when the games, I mean, they, they count one loss wise. But the thing is, is that you know we, we want to hit district rolling, you know. But it is important. We want to get uh, back to 500. You know, we started out on the right foot. We've had two uh, good ball games, competitive ball games, and it'd be great to go into Poteet and you know and take care of business. Now, have you all forced nine turnovers in the past three games? How important is it to create turnovers in this game? It's real important. You know, they got a good running back. That Santos kid, he's a he's a threat. And I've seen where they've been experimenting. They had him at quarterback the first two games. The last game they had him at running back. Um, so it's going to be important to wrap up first. And then, you know, second, third, fourth guy to the, uh, to the pile, just go ahead and try to strip it to give our offense an opportunity. Uh, the more opportunities for us, the better. So, yes, turnovers are a big part, you know, of our defense. So... Now, y'all were fortunate enough to have three games at home to start off the season. How is this road game going to match up to those three road home games? I think it's going to be fine. You know, really, you think about it, it's only a 20-minute trip. So uh, we're going to prepare just kind of like if we were at home. And we'll probably get there, you know, at the last possible second. So we can just kind of give them that little mentality of, you know, this not that, that it's our home field, but just kind of give them that feel. And it, um, the stand should be packed. Last year was pretty packed. You know, it's Atascosa, Atascosa uh how do you say, rivalry, I guess you can say. So it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Great. Well, good luck on Friday's game, Coach. Thank you. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter for the latest scores of your favorite area teams at PE1909. Join the conversation at hashtag MyBCSports. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Inside Brush Country Sports. I'd like to thank the Poteet High School cheerleaders and Ken's 5 Sports Director Joe Reinagle for his time. we also like to extend our gratitude to South Texas Orthopedics. Signing off, I'm Chris Filateo, and head out there and enjoy your Friday night lights.